Welcome Algebra 1. This video is on completing the square. Let's begin. So how to solve some quadratic equations. We learned how to factor before, but sometimes you just can't use those factoring me methods because there aren't any integers that work out. Like for this case, if you want them, there's nothing that multiplies to 94 and adds to negative 6. So because the solution to that is x equals 3 plus or minus radical 3. So there's other ways to actually solve these kind of quadratic equations. Two of the methods to solve these are called completing the square and quadratic formula. We'll learn completing the square in this video, and the next video we'll do quadratic formula. So before we do completing the square, let's actually explain what that means. So we've got these uh, quadratic expressions here, x squared plus 6x, 8x plus 16, and this can be factored to x plus 4 squared. Same thing, x squared minus 10x plus 25, factored to x minus 5 squared, and this one, x plus 1 squared. When they can be factored to some binomial squared, we call, these are called the squares, because it's a square of some factors. So we got to figure out, we want to complete a square. We have part of a quadratic expression. We got to figure out the constant term c, the number, that is needed to make it a perfect square. So for example, if x squared plus 6x plus c, what does c need to be? Well, if c is 36, it'll work out, because you have x squared plus 6x plus 36, and that factors to x Oops, that is wrong. Oops, it is not 6. It's going to be 9, because x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to x plus 3 squared, if you factored that. Because if you had 9 and 6, the two numbers that multiply 9 and 6 are 3 and 3. So c, to complete that, c, you would need 9. How do you figure out that it was 9? We've got this formula here, so write this down very clear. If you have a quadratic expression in the form x squared plus bx plus c, and b and c are some numbers, to, for a quadratic expression to be a complete square, your c value is b divided by 2 squared. So one way to say this, half of b, then square it. So you take whatever numbers here with the x, whatever coefficient of the x term, and you divide it by 2, and then you square it, and that tells you what you need to complete the square. So for example, on that 6x, this the one we just did, our b value here is 6, so we, our c is going to equal 6 divided by 2 squared. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 3 squared, and that's going to be 9. This one, our b is negative 10. So its c is going to equal, and you know what, the negative part actually doesn't matter because it always come out positive. So ignore the negative. It'll be 10 over 2 squared, which is 5 squared, which is 25. For 14x plus c, it's c is going to equal 14 divided by 2 squared, which is 7 squared, which is 49. So that's what I need to complete the squares. So that's what it means to complete the square. Now we're going to use that to solve a problem using completing the square. So I'm going to go back to that first example I showed you the answer to. x squared minus 6x minus 94 equals 0. Your first step is to arrange it in the form x squared plus bx equals c. So that means the variable parts are on the left, and the number parts are on the right. And also leave a blank spot there, because we're going to use that. So to rearrange that, I got this negative 94. I need to add 94 to both sides. And that's going to cancel the 94s out. So I'm left with x squared minus 6x. And we're going to equal 0 plus 94 is 94. First step. Second step is complete the square. So and you, it's on the left-hand side. And we just did this. x squared plus minus 6x. What do you have to add to complete that square? It's going to be half of that b, so your b value is negative 6. So it'll be 6 divided by 2 squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 3 squared, which will be 9. I'm going to add, I shouldn't have done the work over here. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. You have to add it to both sides of the equation. You can't just add to the left. So what you're left with is x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 94 plus 9 is 105. All right. Your next step is to factor the left. So this is going to factor to a perfect square trinomial. In this case, it's going to be x minus 3 squared equals 105. It's always going to just be x minus half of this. So you don't need to actually factor it if you just figure out the pattern. All right, next thing, I want to isolate the variable x. So i got to do a few steps. The first thing is to square root both sides. So I'm going to square root both sides. When you square root something squared, you're just left with whatever the radicand is, minus the squared part. And then square rooting the left, we're going to write this as plus and minus square root of 105. 
Now I want to isolate the variable even more. So to isolate that x, I have to add 3 to both sides. When you add 3, don't add it after the plus or minus. So it'll be 3 plus or minus square root of 105. And that's your answer. And you'll note from what we got before, well, it says 103. It should have been 105. Oh, no, because I messed up right here. Adding 9 is 103. Oops. I won't change that. So it should have been 103. Small mistake. Not a big deal. Let's try another example. I want to solve by completing the square. I'm going to arrange this first. So I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. When you subtract 49 from both sides, you get x squared minus 16x equals negative 49. And then to complete the square, well, it's half of negative 16. So 16 divided by 2 squared is going to be 8 squared, so that's going to equal 64. I'm going to add 64 to both sides. When you add that to both sides, you get x squared minus 16x plus 64 equals 40, negative 49 plus 64. It's going to come out to 15. Now factoring the left-hand side, that'll be x minus 8 squared equals 15. And then I want to square root both sides, so I will square root both sides of the equation. So you're left with x minus 8 equals plus or minus square root of 15. And to isolate that variable, the last step, I want to add 8 to both sides. When you add 8 to both sides, you get x equals 8 plus or minus square root of 15. And that's your answer. You can leave it in that format with the plus or minus. All right. Um, this example. So you got to arrange it in this form, x squared plus bx equals c. But you have a 2x squared here. So the first step to do is divide everything by 2, because I have to just have an x squared by itself. So you can divide all the terms by 2. So those cancel out. I'm left with x squared plus 8x minus 59 equals, equals 0. Now I can rearrange that. So I'm going to add 59 to both sides. If you add 59 to both sides, you're going to get x squared plus 8x squared. Not x plus 8x equals 59. Complete the square here. I'm going to be adding uh, half of that. It's 4. 4 squared is 16. Add 16 to both sides. What you're going to get is x squared plus 8x plus 16 is going to equal 75. And I'm going to factor the left-hand side. So you're going to get x plus 4 squared equals 75. Square root the left side and right side. So I'm going to get x plus 4 equals plus or minus radical 75. And I want to sub isolate the x. So I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And I'm going to get x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 75. Now some of you might know you can reduce the square root of 75. And I'm going to show you that in a different video. So, But the answer, if you want to fully simplify it, is negative 4 plus or minus 5 radical 3. But either way for now would work. I'll watch the quadratic formula of the video to figure out how to reduce. Let's try some examples. So pause the video. All right, what value of c would complete the square? So it's going. To, this is our v value, so it's going to be 8 divided by 2 squared, which is going to be 4 squared, which is going to be 16. This one will be 16 divided by 2 squared, which equals 8 squared, which equals 64. Last one is 15 divided by 2 squared. That's weird because it's odd. So, yeah, usually we don't do. I don't usually do completing the squares for odd numbers because you get fractions to deal with. But anyways, the way to write that is 200. 15 squared is 225. So it'd be 225 over 2 squared, which is 4. So that's your answer for C. Let's try this one. Pause the video. Solve by completing the square, I'm going to add 60 to both sides. When you add 60, you're left with x squared plus 14x. It's going to equal 60. To complete the square on the left, half of 14 is 7. 7 squared is 49, so we add 49 to both sides. And then you're going to get x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals 109. Factoring the left-hand side, that's going to be x, half of that's positive 7 squared equals 109. Square root of both sides. 
When you square root the left side, square root of a square is just x plus 7 equals plus or minus radical 109. And the last step, to isolate the variable x, I subtract 7 on both sides. So you're left with x equals negative 7 plus or minus square root of 109. That is prime, so you can't reduce that. That's it.